Hey friends, I want to tell you a story that has a powerful lesson and it kind of changed my life and I want you to um, hear this one out because I think it's a really important and I know I know that most of us have the attention span of a gnat and I appreciate that but I think this is a really important message so I'm asking you to please give me a few minutes of your time and hear this one out give you a little bit of backstory. Before I was doing sound, I worked in a manufacturing plant. And this manufacturing plant had uh, been struggling with the high cost of insurance and possibly some employee injuries. I forget. And so our manufacturing plant manager decided to put forth an initiative to try to reduce the uh, incidences of workplace injury. And so they put in a safety training program. And the safety training program, a major component of it was uh, that we would have meetings. Uh, I th they were possibly bi-weekly, but I think they were weekly meetings for an hour long that everybody had to participate in. And so they had, I think it was two or three meetings a day, and different groups of employees would attend the various meetings because they didn't have a facility big enough to pull everybody aside at one time to have the meeting. No, of course, that would also be really disruptive. They'd have to shut the whole plant down. So they uh, split all the employees into two or three groups and uh, would run them through these weekly or bi-weekly safety training meetings. And everybody had to participate in it. These meetings covered things like forklift safety, chemical spills, electrical safety, lockout tagout so you could disable equipment while you need to do service on it, uh, fire safety, slips, trips, and falls, uh, how to lift heavy objects without causing back damage, and so forth. It was a little bit of a joke in the company because uh, everybody had to participate in the meetings. Um, obviously, it would make sense for all the folks who are on the shop floor who are you know, facing these sorts of threats, but uh, I wasn't on the shop floor. I was part of administration. I uh, was on carpet. I almost never walked out on the shop floor. It wasn't my job. And likewise, we had a bunch of sales engineers who um, never went on the shop floor, but they had to go. Folks in accounting had to go. Um, our receptionist, she had to go to the meetings. And um, the president of the company, he had to go too. Everybody had to attend the meetings regardless of the position you were in the company. Whether or not you worked at the forklifts or went on the shop floor or not, you had to attend the meetings. So, you know, a lot of us in administration thought it was kind of a running joke and it was a little bit on the, you know, stupidly ridiculous side. But, hey, <laughs> you know, they're paying us, so we'll go sit through the nonsense for an hour. Yeehaw. No big deal. Uh, but it was a good company, and... Um, and today I'm grateful that I got that training because it's been useful in my life. And I want to tell you a story about where it really came to be and changed my life. And I want you to take away from it and take some of the same actions that I did because of it. Okay, so it's been forward a few years. I start working with bands. And this one evening I'm in New Ulm, Minnesota, and I'm... Uh, finishing up with a band and it's now about 2 a.m. and uh, the band finishes up they pack up their stuff and they leave the bar has chased all of the people out of the bar so the bar is empty and the bar staff is just uh, cleaning up for the evening you know putting up the chairs mopping the floors I collected my pay and I break down the PA system and all my gear and I'm wheeling it out of the venue staging it up and getting it loaded into my truck my truck is parked in the back alleyway behind this venue. And uh, this is never in a situation that I'm very comfortable with or I enjoy. I'm alone. I've got a lot of really expensive gear. I've got a pocket full of cash from just getting paid. And I'm in the back alley. And um, it's a place where I have pretty darn high situational awareness. I do not find it amusing at all being approached and harassed by some punks in the back alley when I'm trying to do my job 
And um, I consider it to be a uh, situation which is high risk. And so I'm on pretty high alert as I am in those situations. And uh, so I'm loading equipment into the truck. And as I'm doing this, and I'm kind of keeping my eagle eye out for any kind of weird shenanigans or threats from the urban youth, this car comes pulling down the alleyway at major speed and comes to a kind of a screeching, sliding stop right next to my truck. This is very nerve-wracking. And so I'm thinking, oh, crap, what the hell is this about? And, um... Door whips open, guy jumps out of the car, and he's screaming at me and to kind of nobody in general, holy crap, my car is on fire. Pops the hood, throws open the hood of his car, engine is engulfed in flames, and he's like, crap, I got to get some water, and so he's runs past me and bolts into the back door of the venue, which I had propped open because I'm hauling gear in and out. And he goes running in to go get himself a pitcher of water. Meanwhile, his girlfriend comes out of the car, and she's just kind of standing there, you know, sort of in shock. And I'm looking at this whole situation going, oh, my Lord, you know. And um, then it, a second later, it occurs to me that I'm driving a small commercial truck, and because of DOT requirements, I'm carrying a fire extinguisher. So I go running back to the truck, whip open my driver's side door, go underneath the seat, release the latches, and grab the fire extinguisher. I come running over to his vehicle with that fire extinguisher, and all that manufacturing safety class comes rolling back into my mind as to the appropriate methods of fire suppression, yank the pin and the fire extinguisher, aim at the base of the flames, sweep back and forth a few times, and um, to my surprise and my amazement, I put that fire out in no time. And uh, I hit it with a few good bursts of the fire extinguisher, boom, knocked down the flames. And uh, surprisingly, I was going, wow, I still got about 20-30% of this fire extinguisher left, and I've got this uh, engine fire under control engine fires out and uh car was in pretty good ball of flames when i hit it and i think that a lot of the electrical wiring in the engine bay was gone from the fire but but i saved the car and i'm certain that if i hadn't gotten that fire extinguisher on that fire within just a few more minutes that car would have been gone so uh minute later, guy comes emerging out from the bar with a pitcher of water. And I was thinking, dude, that pitcher of water, when you throw that in a grease fire, it's not going to do anything. That wouldn't have done, done a thing for you, guy. And so uh, I said, hey, got it taken care of for you. Got your fire out. And uh, <laughs> I think you owe me a fire extinguisher, dude. You might as well have the remainder of this one. Um why don't you, like, toss me 20 bucks so I can replace my fire extinguisher, all right? And the guy's like, I ain't paying you shit, man. <laughs> what? I just saved your car. Uh, but his girlfriend came over, gave him the stink eye, and threw me a $20 bill. So, yeah, okay. But, wow, what a powerful lesson. So, I, the next day, I went to the hardware store, bought a new fire extinguisher for my truck. But that's not all. Bought a new fire extinguisher for every vehicle we have. And every vehicle we have has a fire extinguisher in it. I also bought a fire extinguisher for the kitchen and the bedroom. Because, hey, if you're in the bedroom, it's late at night, and the house is on fire... Maybe you need to be able to clear a pathway down the hall so that you can get the hell out of there. You know, if the fire is small, you should take care of it if you can. you got a pretty narrow time window and when you can manage it. If the fire starts getting out of control, it might be more than you can handle with a fire extinguisher. 
And uh, you should have some prudence when dealing with a car fire because the car has you know, maybe 10 gallons of gasoline in it. And that can be really devastating. So deal with what you can deal with. And if it gets beyond what you can deal with, I want you to let that fear response take over. Fear is not forget everything and run. Get the hell out of there. But this is a really powerful lesson to me, which is that for just less than 20 bucks, you can have a fire extinguisher and you can save your property. Maybe inside of your car you've got something valuable, like a bunch of band equipment, which is really expensive. Maybe you've got band equipment, which is more than expensive. Maybe it's a irreplaceable custom guitar. Maybe it's your dog. Maybe it's your child strapped into the seat. Maybe you can save them if you have a fire extinguisher. You know, folks, the threat is real. Between 2014 and 2016, there was over 170,000 car fires. Of all the calls that come into fire departments, 13% of them are car fires. In that period, 345 people died. 1,300 people were injured. Over a billion dollars of property damage happened because of car fires. Now, I'm not saying that all of those car fires could have been easily dealt with if only they had a fire extinguisher. But I am telling you that I bet a lot of them could have. Less than 20 bucks, folks. Put an extinguisher in your car. Please, make sure you have a fire extinguisher in your kitchen and in your bedroom, and anywhere else in your house where you think that it would be prudent. It's such inexpensive insurance, and it can have such a dramatic impact in your life if you can handle that situation. So, you know, we don't buy insurance because we're paranoid. We buy it because we're prudent, and it's... Not because we expect a disaster, but we just know that there's a chance. And if it happens, we want to be prepared. So, friends, I, uh, I want you to have a good life, and I want you to be prepared, just in case. Because I'd hate to see anything happen to any of you. I hope you take the steps to protect yourself and your family. Thanks, people. Till next time. See you later.